Now, when it comes to digital signatures, when we implement this for our blockchain, we're going to have data that we're going to be sending, sending across. But the digital signature is also going to be representing, again, data. And then we're going to be signing that. So one of the things that the blockchains do, Bitcoin and Ethereum, is they salt, I like calling it stamp, they, they add some extra sort of data into the data that, that we want to sign. And by adding this extra little piece of data, they validate also that this uh, was intended for them and that it was also, um, the, the signature was kind of executed, say, based on their protocol rules. So we're going to really want to do the same thing. So what I want to do is introduce you to the, the stamping function that we have here. And you're going to see also that we're going to be using a different hashing algorithm for digital signatures as opposed to other parts of the system. All right. So I'm going to go back into the blockchain project, and I'm going to look for our stamp function. Now, it's an unexported function. Here it is. So I'm going to bring this in, and I want to talk about it. There it is. And I'm going to bring this into our, a lot of times I have the exported align and the unexported, so my brain knows that this is more of a private API versus the public API. You could take more liberties. On a, on a private API, and that, that marker there allows my brain to kind of be able to switch modes. So look at the stamp here. Again, we're going to be hashing um, the th 32 bytes back. But look what we do. We're going to have our JSON function again, so we can stamp any value. There it is. That gets us the bytes. Um, and then we're going to be using this crypto um, KECC a K256 function to do the hashing um, when it comes to digital signatures versus the other one. So, you know what? If we um, look at this for a second, see here what, what this function does is it takes um, a, like, it's a verratic function, right? I can give it different pieces of data and then it will join all that together and apply the stamp as opposed to this one, which just takes the one, takes the one byte. What's kind of cool here is um, that this package kind of already knows that a lot of times you want to add a salt or a stamp to the data that you want to kind of hash, and we kind of get that API for free. That crypto package, by the way, again, is coming from Ethereum, okay? Because this is the hashing algorithm that they use. They don't use the 256. We can use that for other things. Um, they're going to use this one right here. And again, it should give us the same sort of functionality as the other. Look, let's go. I, I've never tried this before, but let's, let's also do this here. So this is going to be the, the sum, right? What if I bring this in where the, um, the data is just going to be V for a second? Oops, I do that all the time. And that's going to bring back a, a slice of bytes. That brought back just a string here. So bytes, I'll just call it data. Um, oh, but I have to marshal it, right? The other function kind of marshaled it for me as well. So maybe what we'll do is this right now. I want to see how it works. I'm trying to think the cleanest way to do this. I want to, what I want to see is the two hashes, how different they are between the two functions. So unfortunately, if I want to do this the way I want to do it, I'm going to have to do this. Just no way around it. Uh, and be V with the JSON Marshall. And that's going to turn any sort of data back here. There we go. And then I'm going to want to pass that sort of data in here, and this will just be k hash, maybe something like that. We'll just kind of hacking some of this. If that fails, I just want to return the error. Again, I want to see what the two hashes are, how different they are. Now, um, I did get back the uh, that, but I got it back in bytes, right? So let's do this call, too, just to kind of see it for a second. And that should give me this, and then I should be able to do that. Yeah, that could be interesting. Uh, and we'll just call this KEC instead of sum. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using our hash function, and I'm summing it. 
And then I'm kind of looking to see how this, this value is different from the other one. Um, and then we're going to have to just do this again, aren't we? So we'll do it again here. And we do this again here. There it is. Maybe we call it sum one, one. I'm actually really interested to see what this looks like. I've never tried this before. And I like to experiment when we're doing these, these things. So let's see again. Make scratch, right? Well, it looks like uh, that didn't work. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Took a little longer. And you can see that both of these algorithms are producing a hash. Um, the difference here is you can see the hashes, again, follow the same idea. Um, we should get the same data for the same thing. If I run it again, I think they had to do a compile. That's why that one took so long. Um, same data if we run it again. Um, completely different if you just change one byte. And uh, again, we can't test the, test the collisions. But this is the hashing algorithm we're going to use for digital signatures, as opposed to the hashing algorithm we'll use for other things related to our blockchain. But you can see we got the same sort of 32 bytes, and, and we've hexed that out. So that's kind of cool, right? All right. So let's talk about the, the stamping here now. In fact, what I, all right. So what we're doing here is we're going to take that value, we're going to marshal it into bytes again. But this time, we're going to add this little stamp. And the stamp is going to be constructed with this in the beginning. Okay, X19, Arden signed message, colon, carriage return, and then the number of bytes that are going to follow the stamp. This is something that both Bitcoin and Ethereum do um, with all of their digital signatures. They put this salt in, except for Ethereum, it's not going to say Arden, it's going to say Ethereum signed message. For Bitcoin, it would say Bitcoin signed message. This is Arden, so we're saying Arden signed message. And then you follow it with the number of bytes um, that follow. All right. So, so in this case, we're going to capture the length of the bytes. And then what we'll do is we'll take that stamp, put it in front of the number of bytes, and then what we'll have is a very unique in other words, because of that salting, that stamping, um, we'll have extra checks in, this, in, the, in place, and we'll also be able to make sure that these digital signatures are, are following our protocols to keep people as safe as possible. So now, if I just wanted to use our stamp here, I mean, I'm not going to see much of a difference, but let's just come here now, and I can do signature dot. Oh, no, I can't right now, right, because I made it. I mean, we're not going to see anything really different. We should just get back, even if I just make it a capital for a second. Let's say stamp V, and um, we're going to get, I'll just call it k hash error. If error not equal nil, return that error. That's why we did that. Sweet. And that's already a slice, so we should be able to do that. The other one returns uh, an array, so we have to convert it. The, one of my favorite sayings in Go is, oh, actually, it returned a string, so we were good. But one of my favorite sayings in Go is, every array is just a slice waiting to happen. I always found that to be uh, interesting. So let's do this. This is two. We don't have to redeclare variables. And now if I run this again, uh, you can see here that that is undefined. Let's just double check that we are, um, yep, yeah, that should be fine. So we come back here. Maybe I didn't save it. I didn't save it. And again, we get back hashes. They're different than the other hashes that we saw now because we have our stamp sort of Im embedded in, in this hash. And we're going to definitely need that. Um, moving forward. So I'm going to make this unexported again. We're going to need this to stamp the data that we're going to sign. Essentially, we're going we're to include this stamp in any data that we're going to sign so we can make sure that that signature is being applied to data that, w that follows our protocols, that follows our protocols. And again, I didn't make this up. 
Ethereum is doing the same thing, except it would say Ethereum sign message or Bitcoin sign message. They, they do the same sort of salting. We're just going to follow, follow those same sort of rules here on our reference implementation. So let me clean this up here. And I'm going to push at least what I've got here now. So we just have the two modifications with that new stamping function. So git commit minus am added the stamp function, right? There it is, git push. And now that we've got a good understanding of hashing and we've looking at how we're going to stamp data before we sign it, we can actually now get into the, the signing mechanics here. Because after we use stamp, now we'll have something to sign and we can validate uh, signatures and things like that.